The presentation for today is ethics in dentistry. So what is ethics? Ethics is a broad term that covers the study of the nature of morals and the specific moral choices to be made. That is whatever things that are ethical that are supposed to be right that you are doing. It refers to what you should do being a healthcare provider to fulfill the responsibilities towards the patient and the society. It is derived from the Greek word ethos that means custom or character. It defines what a person's character is and what are the things that he or she should be doing to be in a good character. It is a branch of philosophy that addresses the questions about morality. That is, concepts such as good and evil, right and wrong, virtue and vice, justice and crime. Now, dental ethics. What are dental ethics? These are the moral duties and obligations of the dentist towards the patients, their professional colleagues and towards the society. They focus on an individual's rights and duties and helps in supporting the autonomy and self-determination, protection of the vulnerable and promotion of welfare and equality of human beings. What is the history behind the ethics? First term ethical standard. This is given by the Hippocratic Oath. It was given by Hippocrates who was considered as the father of medicine in the 4th century before Christ. In India, the code of ethics was framed by the Dental Council of India in the year 1975 and was later notified by the Government of India as the Dentist's Regulation 1976. Now, what are ethical principles? Basically, there are two types of ethical principles, microethical principles and macroethical principles. What are microethical principles? These are the principles which deals with the large-scale issues often in relation to ethical principles or normative rules to guide action. That is, it deals with the individual at a personal level. As the term micro suggests, it works on the individual or smaller level. Now, macroethical principles. These are the set of principles designed to protect the human dignity, integrity, self-determination, confidentiality and rights of population. As the term suggests macro, that is on a larger scale, so it works at the group level. Now, the ethical principles. What are the ethical principles? These are the basic principles that you have to follow anywhere in life, whether it is your clinical practice, towards your patient, towards your colleagues or towards the society. The principles are non-malficence, beneficence, respect for person, justice, truthfulness and confidentiality. Now non-malficence, that is to do no harm. As the name suggests, we are not supposed to cause any harm to the patient. It is considered to be the foundation of social morality. When a patient is in pain, the doctor should attempt to minimize the pain, if not alternative minimal treatment or no treatment to be given. We are not supposed to harm the patient, we are just supposed to reduce the pain whatever the patient is going through. We should always provide the kind of treatment which will either reduce their pain or remove their pain. The kind of treatment should not be that if the pain is being increased by it. Then to do good, that is beneficence, provide the benefit to the patient. It is required for all the healthcare providers. As, for, as a dentist, our role is to benefit the patient, not to inflict them harm. So, the attempts to maximize the benefit and minimize the harm should be made by the dentist. For example, if we are going to treat a patient we have two treatment plans. The one is better, but that will cause greater harm to the patient. And the other one is let, bet, not that better, but it will cause less harm. So we by ourselves try to go for the treatment that will cause less harm to the patient. Then respect for the person. It on, incorporates two fundamental ethical considerations. The first is autonomy and the second is informed consent. What is autonomy? Autonomy is the principle that dictates that healthcare professionals respect patients' right to make decisions concerning the treatment plan. That is, we 
I ourselves have supposed to tell the patient what are the treatment plans available. We need to explain everything to the patient. So the patient himself or herself has the right to choose whatever treatment plan they are supposed to get. An autonomous person is the one capable of deliberation about personal goals and acting under the direction of such deliberations. Dentists usually try to direct the patient toward a particular mode of treatment by stressing only over the advantages rather than disadvantages. We as a good practitioner should not do that thing. We should regulate all the treatment plans, tell whatever the pros and cons of a proper treatment is there to the patient. Then informed consent. What is informed consent? Informed consent is a legal document that tells what are the things that are supposed to be there in the treatment, what are the things that are going to be there, what are the pros and what are the cons. A consent should be voluntary, legally competent, informed and comprehending. It is a two-step process. Firstly, the information is presented to the patient by doctor. Secondly, the patient satisfies himself or herself that she understands and agrees or refuses to undergo the treatment. We have to thoroughly explain whatever the things we are going to do, what are the treatment plans that we are supposed to do, what are the advantages of that treatment and what are the disadvantages of the treatment. After that, once the patient agrees to all of those things, then only he or she will sign the informed consent. What are the things that should be there in the informed consent? It should have the description of the procedures to be carried out, foreseeable risks or discomfort to the subject, reasonably expected benefits from the treatment, a statement that the patient has understood the procedure and is willing to undergo the treatment with the signature of patient and the witness, and a disclosure of alternative treatments available. Now justice. What is justice? It is described as fairness or equal treatment given to each patient. We cannot discriminate any patient on the basis of caste, creed. The primary duty of a health professional should be providing services irrespective of caste, creed, etc. Justice demands that each person be treated equally. The principle of justice is to protect the weak and to ensure the equality in rights and benefits for both groups and individuals. So basically, we have to be fair to all the patients irrespective of whether we know them or we don't know them. Then truthfulness or veracity. The patient-doctor relationship is based on the trust. If a patient is coming to a doctor for a treatment and he or she is agreeing to be treated by him, then it's the, doc the doctor's duty to be truthful to the patient. If there is any problem, if there is any issue, then the doctor has to be true to the patient. Lying will show disrespect to the patient and will threaten the relationship. If there is a complication in any of the treatment, it is the doctor's duty to inform the patient about it. Then confidentiality. The patient has right to expect that all the communications and records pertaining to their care will be treated as confidential. We as a dentist, as a professional, are not supposed to disclose any of the information that our patient has given to us to someone else. If you have to discuss the case with someone else, you firstly have to ask the patient, you have to take the consent from the patient that I am supposed to discuss your case with a senior doctor or my colleague. Do I have the permission for it? If the patient is agreeing for that, then only we can discuss this with someone else or else we have to keep all the personal details of the patient to ourselves. Until and unless, by law, we are stated to disclose it then. So, in conclusion, I'd like to say that a professional person should have respect for human beings competence in the chosen field, integrity, and a primary concern with service rather than the prestige or profit. It is the duty of the physician to protect the life, health, privacy, and dignity of the patient and following all the rules and regulations.